everyone, this is Godzilla Wolf 1 with, surprise, an actual Godzilla toy review. This is the Bandai Creations, um, I think, 6-inch scale Godzilla Final Wars figure, or Godzilla 2004, whichever you prefer. Um, and I got this at Toys R Us along with a whole bunch of stuff I plan to review soon. Um, and really, it... It's a nice figure, and and the reason I have not reviewed any Godzilla figures is the only one I had is a, was this tiny little one that I don't even know what it was called, and it wasn't very good, so I didn't want to review it. But I finally managed to get my hands on an actual Godzilla figure, which are was surprisingly hard to do, and I I'm going to review it. So here we go. Now here's the box. Normal originally he was tied in here with. I don't know, they weren't exactly twist ties, but anyway. I actually like the box a good bit. Let's get them out of there. And get a close-up of the box. Godzilla. Um, Bandai. Ages 4 and up, recommended a... Some, con uh, some Japanese writing, I think, that the kanji. Um, an old Godzilla vs. Gigan pick. On that side, same pick over here. On the back, other figures in the line. And yes, they actually did have all of these. Um, you've got the original Godzilla, the Rainbow Mothra, and of course Godzilla Final Wars 2004. Um, I really like the box. In fact, I even display him on top of the box. I actually use this box for display purposes instead of just throwing in the drawer with the rest of the boxes. Anyway, on to the main event, the figure itself. Okay, now, just in case you have, you don't know, here's the history, so slight spoiler alert. Um, in Godzilla Final Wars, I think it was several decades prior to the actual movie itself, but we do see at least part of the scene, Godzilla was about the most powerful monster on Earth, going on a rampage, and the uh, Gotengo, which was also known as Arctagon in the original movie of the same name where fought Manda um, manages to defeat him by imprisoning him in the Arctic basically blast by sheer accident they managed to bury him in ice and put him into suspended animation well centuries pass well not centuries decades pass and eventually the Exilion invade Earth with their army of monsters and Earth's defenses are powerless before their army. So, the captain of the Gotango, Douglas Gordon, the one that trapped Godzilla originally, decides that there's only one thing on Earth that can stop the Exilians, and that is, of course, Godzilla himself. So, they fly to the Arctic, unleash Godzilla from his frozen tomb, and he proceeds to wipe the floor with the entire Exilian invasion force like they are nothing. Until finally he reaches to Tokyo and confronts their ultimate weapon, um, Monster X, as well as a reconstructed Gigan who previously he'd blown the head off of. Well, he eventually defeats um, Monster X in a battle, and Gigan is killed by Mothra, and the Gotango crew destroy the Exilian mothership. But Monster X transforms into Kaiser Ghidorah. And, well, Godzilla obviously is weakened from all of his fights and gets his butt kicked by Kaiser Ghidorah until they transfer energy into him and let him kill, King, uh, well, basically King Ghidorah in a nutshell, essentially. He doesn't look much like King Ghidorah, but that was the basic idea. Anyway, that's the, about it with this guy's history, except, you know, he heads off into the sunset with Mi Mila and apparently lives happily ever after. Final Wars wasn't that popular of a movie, and I see why people don't like it, it, but this isn't about Final Wars. But the design, on the other hand, some pe people are split on it. Some people think it's too skinny. Personally, I actually like it. Um, anyway, let's get on to the toy itself. Um, it's nice charcoal gray color that looks kind of yellowish under my bad camera. The dorsal spines are nice. Nice, nice arctic white color like they were in the movie. But one little gripe I have is they're not individually painted. They're just sort of spray painted on there. But um, that kind of 
detracts a few points, but it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, there's you get some spots like right here on the hip where they could have done a lot better with it, but still not too bad. It still looks nice. The detail, on the other hand, zoom in is rather excellent. I mean, you see all the bumps and ridges. His, hand, his claws are nice, though. His hand's a little too smooth for my taste, but I can understand. Um, legs are nice. Nice hips, nice and his feet as well. The claws, they're like a yellowish white color if I can get them in frame. That's nice and his tail is nice and long. Pretty cool looking. And the head. Let's go with, let's just get it in close with the head here. Head is very nicely done, very show accurate and you're probably not going to be able to see it but he's got Nice red eyes. And if you heard a dog, that's my puppy. Anyway, it's a chihuahua. Anyway, so overall, very nice detail on this guy. It looks very show accurate. I mean, well, movie accurate. And the ridges are nice the, as well. You know, nice ridges. The dorsal spines are nicely sculpted. Though, for some reason, they inclined to make the dorsal spines here a separate piece. Don't know if you can see that. Um, and the teeth, uh, his mouth is something that kind of blew me away. Yes, the roof of the mouth is black, but they eat, they put a nicely painted tongue in there, which, like I said, poor camera, probably can't tell. Nice teeth. They're not individually sculpted, but they're still nicely painted. And articulation-wise, arms, I think that's like 270 maybe. Not exactly 180, I don't think. Oh, yeah, maybe 180 or 170. I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, his body gets in the way. If it weren't for that, move 180. Um, head moves 360. Why you want to move all 360, I don't know. Legs. They can move 360 rather nice, but you got to move the arm out of the way. And his tail, which actually quite a few Bandai figures that I've heard of, people keep saying their tails are not normally movable. His is movable, but it's mine has a sort of defect on it. I won't pop it out because it's a nightmare getting it back in there. But it's bent in there and it really does not like to turn smooth. You have to kind of force it to get it to move. It's not a glue seal, but it's still not very easy to move due to a sort of defect. Yours probably won't be like that. I can't say 100% it won't be, but it's just an issue with mine, not the release as a whole. And you got his tail. There's a glue seal right here. I don't know if, if you can break that. You might be able to turn it, but I don't know if you can or not. There's like a glue seal right here. I don't know if you can break that and move the tail. I'm not going to try until I know for sure. Because I don't want to break it. Anyway, it's a good figure. And it goes for about 10 bucks. I think it's worth that. Um, it's an overall nice figure. Not that different from what I heard than the Japanese counterpart except for the spines. So you should be okay with it. Um, I'm thinking about next time I get some money going back to that Toys R Us and getting more. They had all three that were on the back of the box. So, I think it's a good idea to get this figure if you're a Godzilla fan. And that's just my dog. Don't mind that if you heard that. Anyway, overall, I like this figure. I recommend it. Give it a 5 out of... Well, a 4.8 out of 5 is what I'm going to have to give this figure. Anyway, really good mold. Really good paint job. Except for the spines. They're what I'm taking that point off for. But, anyway... Overall, nice figure. I recommend it. Anyway, this has been a toy review. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it.